Hello, my sumo peeps. This will be back from a long break of doing sumo tutorials, which I probably won't do as much anymore just because they aren't very uh, popular, but somebody did ask how to do something, and I thought I could do this because it, I don't think it will take that long to show you. And what it is, um, I did an image that had one of these in it. And basically it's a, you know, a candle flame light bulb um, that I made using sumo paint very easily and quickly. And uh, we'll show you how, and maybe you could string some lights and do a do a Christmas light setup out of it and show me, that'd be cool. So, what we want to do is start Sumo. Ba -dum, ba -dum, new image. Let's open that up all the way so we get a nice thing in the center. And we're going to make our first layer black by choosing the pink bucket and pressing there. And we're going to start a new layer. With that, we want to take a selection tool and choose the elliptical selection. And we may want to be kind of an oval, just like that. And you can see we're not really selecting anything other than just creating a space. And what we want to do from that point is take our gradient fill tool and we want to choose the white to transparent. That's the big trick. So yeah, let's undo what I just did by mistake. And I think, I can't remember which way to drag, but we're going to drag. Actually, I should drag the other way. So let's, let's undo that. Let's drag this way. And so you have sort of a semi-transparent light there. So, and actually I should have done that the other way, but that's okay, because we can just go and flip vertical. Uh, that didn't work, so let's start all over. Okay, let's go up. And we'll say that's good. So, now what we want to do, and you can see that I've done that on that, that layer right there. So when I turn that layer off, you can barely see that. It's just a clear thing. Okay, so what we want to do is select and deselect, and choose our move tool. Then right click on that, and choose free transform. Choose our warp transform. And let's, oops, we did the wrong layer though. Let's go back to the white layer, right click. Somebody else can follow this street. I just had a 10 hour day at work. So free transform. And we want to choose the warp transform, and we want to add. Oh, well, let's add. Let's do the middle one right there, so we have all these points that we can play with. So then, we just want to sort of shape this into what we think looks like a candle flame, and so you can really kind of play with it and sort of think what you think uh, light bulbs that have that kind of shape look like. Maybe they get narrower. I don't know, but I'll just sort of do what I think. And that looks pretty good to me. And we'll say that that's okay. So now we'll get out of that. Click it again and choose select pixels again. And we're going to, oops, we should have opened a new layer first. So we'll go back to this layer, select pixels, and go back on the layer on top. And we're going to choose our white foreground color here. We're going to go to the brush. And we're going to choose airbrush number two. Actually, no, let's change that. Let's do something different. Let's choose Thin Ellipse. And let's take our flow all the way up. Our size, let's just take it all the way up, even though that's too big, but I want to show you a trick. Okay. Just press here, and we go, ooh, we just, we would have died that out, but we have the selection, so we'll only do it in the selection. But now that we've done that once, if you push your Shift key, see how that puts a hand there? And with your mouse left button clicked, you can kind of turn this around, you can adjust the size by how you Play with it so you can kind of do this without having to go up there and fiddle with everything up here so what we want to do or what i want to do is kind of get like just sort of a reflection right in here and so i'm going to press that see it just sort of gives us something that's a little bit i don't know like a reflection or something and then let's just sort of shrink that a little bit oops yeah, let's go oops let's undo that I just want to put one right about there. Okay, I know this looks silly now, but let's blur them up a bit. There's blur. Oh, that looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more natural. You can blur them up really as much as you want. But I'm just trying to trying to give it a little bit of shape, like the irregularities that a glass candle flame will have. So let's say OK. And let's unselect, so you select, deselect. You see that kind of has that right thing, but I just want to blur these just a little bit more. Or maybe turn down the opacity, let's try that. Yeah, that looks a little bit more natural to me, so, okay. Scourge that one down. 
And now it's time to make our step. So let's shrink this a little bit so we have a little bit more room. We're going to choose the regular free transform. Hold our shift key and go down to the corner. And that just makes it go down evenly without changing the shape at all. So we want to create a new layer. And we want to go back to our black tool. Actually, let's do white because it's easier to see. And with a paintbrush. This time we're going to choose just the regular old square. And remember what I told you, hold the shift key, brings up that hand, and we can kind of play with that. So what we want to do is, oops, let's not do what I just did. We get it straight, and we kind of take it up here and go, okay, well it looks like it's even. And just take it right to the bottom so it looks a bit like a stem, click right there. Now, this is the fun part, you select pixels, just right click on that, and choose select pixels. We're going to run another gradient over this. And this one, we want to do the gold gradient, whatever they call that. Okay, and then actually I should have randomized the gradient. We want it to look like metal. So we just kind of keep going around until we do something that looks a little bit like metal to you, like that right there. Okay, let's say okay. And we're just going to run the gradient over just like that. Except if I get it a little straight. I think that's probably okay. We're going to try it one more time. Just go on that way, see if you like that better. I think I do. So, select, deselect. So there we have our stem, but it looks a little weird because it's flat right there. So now we want to select our eraser. And we think we're going to select the round circle tool, because we're going to erase it. And we want this to be a fairly big arc, so again, press the shift key. And we'll just bring that up a bit. And we're just going to take that right, like, eh, right there. Ta-da! So you know, that looks more natural. Now here's the real trick. You can't see it yet, but if this were a piece of metal and that were a piece of glass, there'd be a little bit of a shadow in between the two. So I'm going to take another layer, move it down below the gold layer there, and we're going to choose the brush again. This time we're just going to choose airbrush number two. And we're going to shrink that way down. I think that's plenty enough. Oh, except it helps if we use black, so switch your color to black. And we're just going to put a little mark right there. That's a little bit too much, I know. But let's use the transform tool, free transform. And let me just kind of shrink it like that, just sort of give it a little body. And then we'll turn down the opacity some, not on that, but on this. And it just, I don't know, to me it gets a little bit more of a natural appearance. So, there we have the stem, the light bulb, the little shadow. Next layer, we want to put the part that I guess would fit into a light socket. So let's choose another layer. Let's move that layer again below, below the stem and the shadow. And go back to paintbrush. Go to Steampunk. And choose, what's this called? Ring bell number three. And again, shift key. And then we can kind of adjust the shape and the size. Again, I like to run this up to the top and see how level it is. It looks level, just needs to be a little bit smaller. Let's try that. Oh, it's a little crooked, so let's undo. That's still crooked. It does. I guess we could just do it and then worry about it after the fact, but. Now oh, that looks pretty good. And again, what do we think we need? A shadow. So one more layer. Move it down below those two. A little black still. I want to go back to the first basic brushes number one, airbrush number two, and again we're just going to make a little bit of a shadow. looks weird because I didn't put it in the right place yet, but that's okay. We just want to kind of flatten it out. Make it look like a bit of a shadow. Bring it down. And turn down the opacity. And it just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. And I suppose that's it for now. So there we have something that looks like a candle flame light bulb. Now, this is the fun part. 
One more layer. Paintbrush back to steampunk. And let's see, these things. Mill one, mill two, mill three. I think I like mill two, so we'll choose that. And again, shift. Turn that thing around. And I don't know if this looks anything like the innards of a light bulb because I don't have one to look at. But in my book, it looks kind of cool used in one of these uh, images. So we're just going to press that. And we're going to move that beneath the light bulb there. So you can see it on the inside. And we want it to be a little bit more visible. So we're going to adjust to the levels. And we're going to bring up the whites. Just so it shows up a little bit more. And if it looks a little bit too much for you, Let's free transform it. Let's make sure we got it kind of small. We want it a little lower. And we can also take the opacity and move it down if we think it's a little too high. So I need to get the right uh, layer here. See, this is where Sumo screws up. It's like, you know, black is this layer, but it's all of a sudden the flash is screwing up. So we'll turn down the opacity a little bit on that. So it looks like it's more inside the bulb. And there you go, there you have a light bulb. And this is something I want to show you um, because if I were to merge everything together, what's going to happen is they're going to, whatever has the dominant opacity is going to change. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off this back layer. There's your light bulb. And as long as we have it like that, you go up here to File, Save to my computer, and we'll call it Flame bulb. And we'll save it as a PNG. Very important. It has to be saved as a PNG. Choose save when it comes up with a place for where. Always choose your desktop because then you'll know right where it is. And choose save. Now, let's just close out of this. And let's open from hard drive. And see, there's a thing called flame bulb. Open it up. And ta -da, there it is. All those one keys, all the opacities that we made it in. Add a new layer, put it below that layer, and we'll paint that black, and there we are, right where we started. Now, here's the fun, where if you want to turn this into Christmas, or any kind of other display, um, like let's say we wanted to wrap these with wires and have them go around, you know, for like Christmas lights. Um, La Lathyrus would be really good at this, because she's really good at doing twisty things, but um, we don't necessarily have, have them screwed into a socket. They're really just for decoration. But let's say we want to give colors, or like light. So let's do another layer, move it again beneath this layer, and choose our brush tool. This time let's go to 3D brushes, and I'm just going to take a stab. We're going to try Flare 4, and let's choose a red light. Let's just see what happens. And we can blur it if we want to try and get. We can duplicate it if we want it to appear like there's more light. But and then you can go ahead and merge that down, merge that down, and that light will always be inside there. So you could do red, blue, green, whatever colors you want and just have like a Christmas display. You could, if you wanted, let's see, add another layer, um, put basically another sparkle behind it to make it really look like a big glow. Like let's choose that one, or make it a little bigger. Let's just see what happens. So it looks like a sort of winky red light. But you can do white lights, blue lights, whatever you want. So that is how you make one of those light bulbs. They're kind of fun. You can save this as a PNG file to your computer to use for other things. Um, but yeah, if you're into that, show me what you can do with it because they're kind of fun to have. And this will give you a clue how to make different kind of globes and uh, bubbles and things. You don't necessarily have to use their sphere tool here. It's actually more fun to create your own spheres. And, bulbs and things like that. So anyway, I hope that works. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and uh, show me what you can do with a string of these lights. Have fun. Bye.